Welcome to a completely different kind of Common Rider review. Today, we are looking at Figure Rise Cyclone Joker, a master grade model kit of Common Rider Double himself. This is quite literally the largest double toy I have ever had my hands on, as if you can see by a quick size comparison to regular old Coke can here, this thing is massive! Now, of course, it's a model kit, so the box isn't exactly telling of its size, but it is telling of how freaking cool this thing is. You can see, very nicely detailed box, and why am I showing you the box first? Well, quite frankly, uh, everything else after this is going to take a little while. Opening up, you can see this thing is massive. Master grade model kits are known for tons and tons of parts. So many freaking things to put together on every level of detail you can imagine. Absolutely everything on here comes included as its own separate little piece. There's a few stickers in there. You can have the option to paint it if you want. But, jeez, you really don't need to. Man, look at... I'm gonna need a minute. Now, that looks like a real action figure. Behold the completed figure eyes double model in its full glory, and this is going to be a little hard for me to review, and here is why. This thing is huge. This is a full 9.5 inch action figure, right in between the size scale of a figure art and a Project BM full 12 inch figure. That's just about where I like my large-scale action figures, so this is dead on for me. It's also making it very hard to film because I have to be very far away from my table to get it all in shot. I will endeavor to do my best, however, th though as a result this video might be choppier than usual. We're going to start off by demonstrating a lot of this detailing. I really want you to see this and get a good appreciation of just how well molded this toy is. As you saw during assembly, everything here is based off of that silver piece that forms the spine of the toy. Everything is built off of that, which gives it this very deep, very nice multi-layered appearance. A lot of depth to it, much better than just, you know, it looks a lot more dynamic than just sculpting on the detailing. Speaking of, you do have a lot of sculpted detail. You can see the little dents there, right? J very accurate to the show. This over here is a decal that's been applied. I want to point out that underneath that is molded detail that matches the sticker. However, uh, they give you a nice option. You can either just put the little black lines around it and have the molded detail, or put the sticker on. I suck at painting, so I opted for the sticker. And I don't think it really harms the toy in any way. It looks really good with just that. Also stickered is the black line all the way up and down his middle, all the black line, and it goes right through the back as well. This, I will admit, is irritating to put on, mostly because it is a lot of very long, very thin stickers. You will get annoyed with it, but there are a few additions. There are a few things to mention. Number one, a lot of them overlap. 
so underneath it actually has a little bit of extra that keeps it secure. On the other hand, uh, these are Bandai stickers, so you will get a couple that will unstick. Uh, my suggestion, keep a glue stick handy, put some real adhesive on there if one of the stickers is a little bit stubborn. This I'm going to go fix right after this review. But it's a very small, small flaw to this toy, and it's one you might not even run into. Mileage may vary after all. I've also got all the appropriate detailing up and down the arms there, again, the molded detailing for the Cyclone side, again with very thin stickers applied. I'll give you a look at the Joker side as well. A lot of the little details I wouldn't expect were included, like this uh, underpiece, the the, the bodysuit that the actor wears under the armor. Fully represented here. Really comes off very nice. You know, it's, it's a small detail, but it really does improve the appearance. It gives it so much more depth than you would expect from one of these. Detailing on the head also matches very well. You can see not only does it have all of those little ridges that we're familiar with on double, and right down to the little gem underneath the W crest, compound eyes. This is what really amazed me. You have to assemble these yourself, which isn't too hard. It's a metallic sticker on a round surface underneath, which is really irritating to put on. However, any imperfection is instantly covered up by the outer lens, which completes the look. Gives it a really nice living appearance, just like the one in the show. It's a very small detail, but again, these toys seem to be all about small detail, and it really shows in details like that. I'm mentioning the word detail a lot. Can you tell I'm impressed? For articulation, again, it is incredible. You've got a very full range of motion in the shoulder, up, down, and outward. And as you can see, the armor, the little shoulder guards, are articulated as well. They're not attached to the arm in any way. They're on their own independent joint. So they move any direction you want to allow whatever pose you want. And you get beyond 90 degrees of rotate uh, movement outward on the arm joint, which is amazing. You also get the double jointed elbows, as well as this. And this is amazing that you actually assemble it. See that? Those are individually articulated fingers. Not only at the hand, but in the middle knuckle as well. The hips work the same way. You've got a lot of range of motion here. And I also want to point this out. I'm sorry you have to look at his crotch for this. Even the inner joint still has the molding of the undersuit. Again, small details. Love it. You've got a double jointed knee here as well. I'm showing this all on the cyclone side because the green shows better. You've also got some of the things I see more often in a figure art. The tilting ankle, giving you a wider range of poses, as well as the jointed toes. And of course, this thing can move forward and backward. So, pretty much any pose you want is accomplishable by all of these joints combined. You've also got a very nice torso joint, which you can see the waist does articulate, but so does the chest. You can move it up and down as well. The middle piece isn't secured, and that's actually a good thing because it flexes along with the top and the bottom. That creates this little accordion effect that more naturally repl uh, replicates the suit's function. It is another really small detail that really pays off. And of course, in the head, full range of motion in the neck. Very nice ball joint. You can bring it pretty high up if you want him staring up at the sky. You've even got the articulation not only at the top of the neck, but at the bottom. So you've got a ton of posability here. You're not going to get, as far as I can tell, it's on par or superior to even a figure art. What I would warn against is, of course, since this is a Japanese model, it does rely on poly caps. So while this does have a wide range of poses you can put it in, I wouldn't push it too much. This is, after all, meant to be a model kit, not a fully-fledged action figure, so the tolerance might not be up to your standards. But if you just want something to pose and display, this thing is gorgeous. 
What really amazed me about the toy were all the gimmicks that I didn't even know I was assembling. Now, there's a few that I had heard about. I'll demonstrate this as well as I can, because it's kind of tricky to keep on camera. But as you can see, this is something Figurize does quite a bit. The bulging bicep gimmick. Flexing the elbow will cause that to rise up, just like an actual muscle. And, also, the elbow, or at least the bone in the elbow, will also extend... So, it, again, gives it a more natural look when you're posing it, which is a great little touch. It's a very strange gimmick to put together, but it works out. And, actually, the legs do something similar, though I'm not sure if this replicates the show very well. As you can see, you also get a bulge in the thigh as the armor slides up and down to replicate, uh, well, bulging muscle. One of the other ones I wasn't expecting, and something that came much to a surprise, you won't see, you can't tell by looking, but this is a rubber piece. It is a rubbery plastic that adds a lot of friction to the bottom of his feet, so it's very hard for this toy to slide around. And of course, I keep putting it off, so here it is. The fully assembled double driver is magnificent. It's a very accurate, tiny rendition of the model of the actual toy. Now, if I push this side up, you can see it does work just like the real toy. When one side goes, so does the other. On, you can also remove the memories. These do fit into his hands if you work his fingers the right way, and you have the maximum drive slot here on the side. So you can also execute the maximum drive for either one. They both fit, though it is tricky to get out. You'll probably have to pull that off in order to remove the memory, which isn't a big deal. It's a little, it's just a peg holding it in there. But it's a really magnificent job on this replication here. I really would not have expected this to work as well as it does. And it's really quite magnificent to see. And icing on the cake, just because this thing needed to be cooler, apparently. Not only do you have a fully articulated muffler here in the back, with its own little ball joint stem to plug in, it's also articulated, so you can have it flapping in the breeze however you want. That's a very small touch that I think is really cool. Something you've probably seen in this video by now, but did not see me assemble, is the display stand. This is a nice little bonus as well. Let me go ahead and attach it to the model. The way you do it, you have to unclip that. That's the, uh, well, if you have the toy double driver, that's the little thing that keeps the belt together. If you are lucky enough to actually be able to wear it without any kind of extender or anything. You get a second piece that snaps on in replacement, and that attaches right to the back of the model. Now, like I said, thanks to the rubber soles on his boots, this guy's not going to go anywhere if you display him properly. However, it does make it a little bit more secure and a little bit more trustworthy on a shelf to have the display stand. And of course, this allows a wide variety of poses. It also allows for the Joker Extreme. You can pose him doing his rider kick. And because of that, since this guy doesn't have any weapon accessories, you get an extra muffler. This one extra long and one piece flapping in the breeze as he delivers his double kick. It's a nice little touch. And if he's going to have any accessory, he might as well have this. And it does add a lot more to the toy, considering there isn't any display stand I know of that's going to be able to hold this guy up. Overall, I can't recommend this guy enough. You are getting a huge figure that's really fun to assemble. And for the price, it actually beats out a figure art as far as posability as well as detail accuracy. This is more accurate than the figure art fig toy that I have already reviewed. Now, the way that Bandai is marketing this thing is devious. Because they are also making Luna Trigger and Heat Metal. And they are actually advertising that the sets are interchangeable. You can make any of Double's nine forms. In fact, with Fang Joker, Joker, and Skull coming out, I can imagine you could come up with some pretty devious forms that they never intended for you to build. 
but that is up to you. For me, this thing is flawless as is. If you're a fan of Double, this is an amazing toy to have in your display. And as of this video right now over at Hobby Link Japan, it is on sale. This actually runs cheaper than Figuarts at this point. This is a must-have for a Double fan or a model kit fan. Uh, despite being a master grade model out of Japan, it's pretty easy to follow the directions, so don't let that sway you. As far as I'm concerned, this is one of the better toys I have picked up for the series. But you know what? I feel like a lot of my Common Rider stuff has been double lately. Now that he's moved on and we've got O's, maybe it's time I go... older.